Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the playoffs for EGFH Season 1 in Overwatch. Right now, we have the second quarterfinal match between the winning team from the last match, the Ludlow Falcons, and the Stonington Bears. Whoever wins this will be playing in their semifinal match on Thursday. I want to start off by thanking our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, HyperX, and Controller Chaos for making this season possible. Be sure to check out their links below. And guys, once again, that MVP vote is currently going on, so make sure to type exclamation point MVP to get in on that action. My name is Victor Vic Sharpwani, and for this series, I am joined by the one, the only, Cool J. How's it going, guys? Uh, map selection during the playoffs is a little bit different than the regular season, and will be picked and banned rather than predetermined, getting some league action going on here. As the higher seed, the Bears get pick on maps one and three, which are hybrid and escort, while the lower seed, the Titans, get to pick pick map to control the maps we will be playing today are king's row oasis and route 66 if there needs to be a tiebreaker we will go to lijan tower yeah that's an interesting map pool in my opinion for the anyone that watched the first quarter final completely different blizzworld and nepal actually banned not even gonna be able to see them on this map so what do you think cool jay we've seen the falcons a lot the bears kind of come in as an unknown commodity who's going to uh pull that one out well it's interesting that the bears are the higher seed and so i'm looking at king's row and route 66 these are both very standard maps like king's row widely accepted as one of the best maps in overwatch everybody loves to play on it there's a lot of different comps that are viable because of the way the streets work you can actually get away with playing death ball it's not all dive um and route 66 very open but also when you look at the escort maps you're talking junker town gibraltar uh dorado route 66 is really the most stable and standard out of those so i think they were going for picks that were more comfortable and oasis coming out of ludlow i think they have some sneaky stuff in mind for that because that is a very non-standard pick oasis in my opinion is up right up there with ilios as one of the worst king of the hill maps <laughs> uh in terms of predictability and so i think that uh ludlow is trying to catch the bears off guard here with that oasis pick yeah and on the blue team for this series it will be the stonington high school bears uh cranker rifofo crash not toxic matthews and lubbock yeah, and looking at Ludlow, we're seeing a bit of a change today. Uh, as noted earlier, Zoom is not in the lineup like he was last time. We're going to be seeing Bacon Pie in addition to him. Stevek makes his return. Fruity Memes, Glacier, Lineth, and Schnarfels are out and ready to go. I love Schnarfels' name. Uh, for those <laughs> anyone confused, used to be Schnark. He made it much better with Schnarfels, in my opinion. But we're going to see Ludlow on the defense first and or sorry excuse me bears on the defense first interesting kind of standard so far from what we've seen um i like what i'm seeing here from stonington the only thing i'm worried about is not toxic on this zarya since they're playing without a roadhog he's really gonna need to pick up the slack on that damage it looks like we need a we pause, do need to pause. Out from yeah Lolo. uh but even with that Junkrat providing the extra burst, the Zarya is really going to need to pick up the extra damage. Uh, and I think also it's important to look at Lubbock on the D.Va. He needs to control the high ground, and especially look right now might change, especially since we're paused. But right now, Fruity Memes is on that far up uh, with no hit scan. Moira and Zar or Moira and D.Va are really going to need to focus on containing that far up. I would be. Slightly surprised, Cool J, if they stick with that. 15 seconds left. These teams like to troll us, let's be honest. But um, looking at the Bears' composition, it is weird because you don't have a standard DPS really in there at all. You have Rifofo and the Junkrat, but there's a lot of tank and a lot of what they would maybe hope for, either a pick or an extended fight. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm not really surprised uh, that they didn't go with a more traditional DPS like a Soldier or a McCree. Because in this meta, most of the time you're either playing against an Orisa or you're playing against 
dive or you're playing against quad tank and soldier and mccree don't really do well against any of those you know there's a lot of shields in the way it's really hard to find the damage that you're looking for and running projectile or running multiple tanks is often a better pick as we're seeing this meta continue to evolve as more and more patches come out yeah and it looks like you were indeed trolled cool j as we see uh, the Falcons actually switching to their actual comp. Lineth on his Reaper, and Fruity Memes going to that Moira. That he stacks those coalescents so fast. Yeah, I think it'll be the ba battle of both the coalescents and the Zarya energy here. Let's see what Not Toxic is built up to, as Stonington is preparing to defend. They try to push through Hotel. They are set up here. Here comes a charge. Kraker finds an early kill on the Snarfles, but a counter charge from Stevic takes Kraker so far away from his team, he gets taken down. But meanwhile, Stevic can't protect his team. Stonington pushing into Hotel here, finding kills, Lubbock and Not Toxic combining very well. These tanks and Not Toxic, I talked about it. Look at that energy from this Zarya. Yeah, and the, the key in that fight was there was no blink from Cranker. He just went straight in as soon as he saw a charge, but Falcons aren't done yet. And look, this fight is engaging once again, and so much energy from Not Toxic. Sonington trying to push in, but that Zarya barrier, so much damage is keeping them away. Here comes Coalescence from Footy Memes. Is that enough to keep them alive on the point? Lineth finds an early kill into Ryofo, but here comes an Earth Shatter from Cranker. The Diva Bomb comes out. It doesn't find any kills, but it zones everyone away from this point. Here comes Lineth with a Death Blossom. He finds two. Tons of damage. There goes Lubbock's mech. And I think this is it for Ludlow. They're going to get the point here. They just need to clean it up. Cranker finds two on the Reinhardt, but it's not going to be enough. A fantastic hero play from Lineth on the Reaper. Yeah, the hero play. Lineth once again opening up his backpack and saying jump in to start this map. And that started with... Cranker really kind of missing the Earth Shatter. Yes, he hit, I believe, Glacier, but they really got nothing from that. And for such an important defensive ultimate, that swung the fight, it felt like. Because then when it feels like he can go aggressive, because that danger is gone. And here's what I'm looking at going into this next fight. Rip Tire at 93. Graviton is up for this defense. Can they outplay Stevek? Can they engage before his Shatter comes through? It'll be a, <laughs> a great block by Cranker, and here comes the grab, here comes the tire, he finds two. So many people come to grab as well, Sharful is going to get taken down, and there we go. Fantastic coordination there by Stonington. They're able to save that sound barrier, they're able to build up Shatter, and look at Coalescence, that's close too. These alts beautifully used by Stonington there. Yeah, and just like you said, it mattered about the Earth Shatter from Stevic there. Wasn't able to really find anything. A beautiful play from Stonington to turn that. And we've seen some really strong defensive holds. Stonington setting up to maybe try and get another one. And here we go, Lubbock causing havoc on this D.Va. Both teams engaging here. Ludlow slowly pushing this payload forward. Stonington not really trying to engage to a fight yet, trying to... Force Ludlow to engage on them. Here comes a grab, sound barrier, earth shatter, the whole hog from Bacon Pie doing so much damage. Snarfle is able to finish off two kills, but Bacon Pie is going down so low. He's caught so far out. Lubbock with the Diva Bomb. Can he find anything with that? He does find one. Toxic finishes off another. And this is one messy fight, but I think Ludlow is finally going to get pushed back here. Well, oh. you say that, and then <laughs> right Lineth... say that, Lineth comes back. Will they be able to push to the end on that, though? I, it would be hard, I think, to push to the end. You see the respawns are coming up. They didn't really stagger a lot. That fight, the initial fight, went so well for Stonington because they took Lineth out so quickly. It was a messy fight. It was a long fight, but that Reaper wasn't theirs. And so, <laughs> Stonington's feeling comfortable. They don't want to give this up. Another whiffed shatter from Cranker there. Both Reinhardt's having trouble in this matchup. Cranker going to get charged and taken down. And this is a fantastic engage from Ludlow here. Blocking that shatter and pushing right in on the back of those Reaper Hellfire shotguns. And I think that's going to be an easy cap. Yeah, that, that felt a little unnecessary from Stonington. You know, they really pushed that in quickly and very fast almost like you know oh we don't have to give the second point you know we can go 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 and yet 
that just led them right into what Ludlow wanted. And Lineth teleporting up top. Meanwhile, look at these switches on the defense. There's a soldier and a reaper up in Nontox. He finds a kill on the Lineth. Ludlow trying to back out here, but Stonington seizing their opportunity. They're coming in. They find Fruity Memes on that Moira as well. Here comes a charge from Cranker. Sevek solo. No more shield. He goes down. And look at this push from Stonington. I think a real key for them. They've come out. They've really impressed me with their coordination. Yeah, the fights that they've been ready for, that they've been on the same page for, have been so key. And I guess the other key thing of every fight that they've won is Lineth goes down early. Um, even if the Falcons have been able to come back and take a fight, you know, immediately after, if Lineth dies early in the fight, it's a really good sign. But with the Earthshadow and the Death Blossom, they may look for this. A great charge from... Cranker and Lineth with a Death Blossom, the first one to not come up with at least two kills. And a great shadow from Cranker and a Death Blossom from Not Toxic. He built that up in one fight. A fantastic play there. A good combo as Cranker finally finds a good shatter. We've been waiting for it all game from both sides. Yeah, and Not Toxic is winning these Reaper duels right now with Lineth to the fact that he made Lineth switch. Lineth is now on Genji. Because not toxic is just out reapering him right now. And yeah, I think that's huge. They're forcing Lineth, who made so many plays on that Reaper, to switch. We'll see if he can still make plays on that Genji, but I don't think it's going to be as easy for him. They're pushing on the Stonington right now. That payload is moving forward. It seems like they just. They're just not ready to engage their ride shield bow, and here oh. comes the grab! Stevek with two in one charge! Bacon Pie cleaning up the trash! A great hook on the Not Toxic! And I don't think they're gonna be able to even stagger this out. No, they're gonna try to for sure, but the last meter's gonna go, they're not quite gonna get to the payload to force overtime. And we talked about the coordination, both these teams so coordinated when the fights go on their terms. The Wombo, we've seen it all season from the Falcons, and it's still one of their best traits, one of their best strategies, is all of those ultimates and their timings on them. And you know what, the big thing for me there is Yes, Ludlow looked a bit shaky. Stonington looked like they were doing pretty well in that defense. But at the end of it, Ludlow comes out with 90 seconds on that time bank. That's a lot. They're cleaning up fights very well. And they're also le leaving lost fights very well. And I think that's something that will give them the edge here. Because these teams seem a bit more evenly matched than I expected. Yeah, and it's kind of something we saw from Ludlow in their previous match today against the titans was it was very close the teams were even a lot but then somehow just by the smallest margins the falcons found a way to win and they would win a point and then win a map and before you knew it it was 2-0 and i think the most important thing here is we see stevic on that orissa we talked about how much he struggles on the Reinhardt, especially against other Rhines, but his Orisa and his Winston are top notch, and I think that is also going to play a big role here for Ludlow. Yeah, and I'd like to think that Stonington's going to actually run this comp because this would be amazing to watch with the way they were coordinated in that last defense, but. 15 seconds left. We've been trolled before. I don't necessarily want to focus on it. I do find it interesting that Glacier running the Ana on the defense here. Um, not something we've seen recently. Five, yeah, I think uh, Ludlow's going to struggle. The two, Ana Mercy, they one. don't really have and anything to counter, say, a Genji alt or a Reaper alt. So it could be very tough for them. They're going to be able, need to like avoid those types of alts to be able to kill them before they can get taken down. And right now, Rifofo diving right in the back line, but Matthews gets taken down. Non-Toxic in the front takes down Stevek, but all the kills in favor of Ludlow right now, they're gonna res up their one loss. Uh, Free Memes gets taken down, but that's about it. Ludlow is gonna finish off this fight with ease. They're gonna stagger Lubbock on the Baby Diva. Yeah, that felt a lot like that point two fight on their defense where they just kind of rushed in without necessarily having a massive plan ready for an extended fight because as soon as not toxic got into the back lines and rifofo kind of fell it staggered a lot no one was keeping an eye on lineth and they're just going for it again and here comes a shatter from Craker. he takes out almost the entire team but there's no follow-up he gets immediately taken down they're on the point almost to that first tick they're gonna get the first tick but i don't think they're gonna get much more than that 
No, the coalescence is going to come out. They're going to try and at least keep this going, but yeah, they kind of have to back out now. And that's a huge waste of that coalescence, but I still have to go back to the start of that fight. A beautiful shatter from Cranker. Almost the entire defensive Ludlow taken down, and they couldn't follow up a single kill on it. Yeah, that seemed like maybe Rifofo and Not Toxic weren't expecting that Earth Shatter to go the way it did. Um, because there was no follow-up, you're right. And they're just continuing the strategy. Oh, and Toxic uses his ult. It seems like he expected more support from his teammates there, but his teammates weren't with him. Cranker had gotten hooked and taken down very low. He actually got taken out right before that Reaper ult started. And now, in addition to being hard staggered by this defense, they're very down in the alt economy. Yeah, we see four alts sitting right now for the Falcons. And this has just been a great defense. You know, you have to appreciate the fact that they've been ready for the Bears every time they've tried this just dive in strategy. But Bacon Fies down, is this the opening? And a great play there. They take down the Mercy Moth right as she pulls it out. There goes the Ana as well. And this is what I was talking about. There's nothing to counter a Genji Blade. Right, Fofo swiping all over the place. And now Schnarfels is all by himself on this point. Yeah, it should be a matter of time before he goes down. That'll be the point over to the Bears. And kind of finally, they almost wore down the Falcons, it felt like. You know, they every time they got forward for the attack they just dove right in onto the point they didn't give the falcons time to breathe time to kind of compose an actual defense because just on respawn it was aggression and now we're seeing stonington pushing up cranker here trying to hold this corner we see ludlow with some switches they have a moira now instead of a mercy i don't really think that addresses their problem but maybe it could help it lubbock though on that diva is going to be able to eat those uh moira orbs it's going to be very hard for her to get charged yeah, and we're seeing Cranker. He's playing so far up. They don't look like they want to stop their aggression. Oh, Cranker. Oh, great hook and Cranker down. I don't know why he dropped his shield there. And Stonington going to push this payload as long as they can before Ludlow advances here. Another halt hook combo attempted. They didn't quite get what they were looking for, but Toxic still goes down. And Stonington is now badly staggering. Lubbock loses his mech. And that is pretty much the worst possible scenario for this squad. Yeah, and kind of the bad thing for the Bears there was the Falcons didn't have any ults at that point, really. Now they've got two. Lineth almost has the uh, Deadeye again, so he's really approaching. And Fruity Memes, the king of coalescence at this point, he charges that so fast on the Moira. And the Shatter attempted from Cranker on the side, and again, a total whiff. Schnarfels with a nice whole hog pushing them right into that corner that they tried to attack from. It was an interesting attack angle, but it didn't quite work out. What I'd like to see them do is go up through the top hallways and attack from behind. Yeah, that alley, an interesting attack angle for sure. Like you said, that felt like that was set up for the Earth Shatter. And yet for Cranker to miss that really deflated that attack. I agree with you. I think coming from behind, they have that composition that if they get on, especially Knock Toxic has the Death Blossom. If he gets into the back line, that could be death, but there's four ultimates on the Falcons. They are ready for this. They're engaging with the Diva Bomb. This is what they wanted. They get Lineth, and since the Arista Shield was out, they didn't have much flexibility to move away. Stevek goes down. The Death Blossom comes out for both sides. Bacon Pie able to pick up one. Schnarfels picks up another, but they're finishing people off. Schnarfels is still alive. They need to focus him down. Yeah, but when Roadhog may be tanky, but when he's the only member remaining, it's so easy for them to tank him down. And to, this kind of feels like the, the scenario for the Bears to win this offense is they just kind of keep wearing the Falcons down, forcing them, getting their ult charge. They're just going to keep banging their head against a brick wall, and sooner or later, the wall will fall. I agree, but I've been really impressed with Lubbock's Diva play. His positioning has been decent so far, and especially his usage of Defense Matrix to deal with that. Moira and Rifofo, the Genji Blade comes out, he finds two, and still punishing the fact that Ludlow has nothing to defend against a Genji Blade. Yeah, and now the question is, how quickly can they charge those ults back up? Because those two fights went so in favor of the Bears because they had things like the Coalescence, they had the Death Blossom, they had the Diva Bomb, how quickly can get, they get those ults up? They're at 85 now, but once again, Ludlow still has advantage in ult economy. 
Yeah, they need to engage well with them. Here comes the Deadeye from Linith. How much damage is he going to be able to get with it? He's nanoed as well. The Electric Cowboy comes out. A Shatter comes up for Bigger. All of the entire team down again. The Arista Shield comes out and Snarfles goes down to the Diva Bomb. Cranker finding kills as well. The Coalescence comes out. Stevic goes down. And look at this coordination. The cleanup from Stonington. Everyone going down in turn. And the Death Blossom is up now for Not Toxic to defend this point. Everyone on Stonington is rightfully on fire as they're trying to push. And look at, they're just trying to keep Ludlow out. And here's the fight, Ludlow, though. Oh, wanting no. To a fantastic engage from Ludlow. They come out with a supercharger with the whole hog. Cranker got a bit too overzealous and not toxic. Unable to stay up and use that death blossom. Love it. Going to get staggered here. He's going to jump right off the map. That's the smart play. Yeah, they were trying to keep him alive. You, uh... Glacier was just using his boops to keep Lubbock off of the environmental kill. And Rifofo hasn't really been involved in either of the last two fights. The last fight that went Stonington's way, Rifofo died before the fight even started. So he's sitting at 43% ult instead of maybe having another Dragon Blade ready. Yeah, but with all of these targets for him to hit, I'm pretty confident he can build up another one and not toxic takes down two in the back line with his death blossom he does get taken down for it though here comes the dragon blade from lineth let's see how can stonington deal with it lineth finds two there's not much time left on the clock i'm not sure if stonington can pull this back yeah right fofo is trying to stay alive but at this point all that might result in him is him being staggered even worse um and now he's going to have the ult charge for this fight. This is the last ditch effort. Not Toxic also switching to the Tracer. They're just going for time here. They know time's up. They are able to make it to the payload. I didn't even expect that. Lubbock and Not Toxic here trying to do whatever they can to keep it going. Cranker and Matthews have already gone down, though. Here comes a Coalescence trying to keep the side of Sonington up. Can they stay alive on this payload? Lubbock goes down. Not Toxic goes down. Here comes Rifofo with that Dragon Blade, but he doesn't find anything. All he gets is Glacier before he gets hacked. Yes, hacked. That's right. There's a Sombra out from Bacon Pie. Matthews makes it to the payload just barely. They just keep staggering in for Sonington, but they can't seem to find any kills. Yeah, and a swag Dragon Blade from Lineth as the game ended. Like you said, there were so many switches in that end from the Falcons as well. Sombra came out. A Doomfist actually even came out from Stevic, just trying to keep the Bears off of the point of the and once again as we're gonna see right fofo i think we all know what this play was that awesome dragon blade here at second point yeah this was just a fantastic play they recognized that ludlow wasn't running those supports they stuck with the genji even though it wasn't necessarily the best against that tank comp and it really did get them far until that last section yeah, and it feels like just what I was, I think, mentioning after the first round in that goal was they were, it was so close. The Bears were making good plays, but in the end, by a matter of meters, the Falcons found a way to win. And it looks like uh, Stonington is requesting a sub. I'm not really sure what the protocol on that is, but... Yeah, so I guess we're going to go into a quick break as we go towards map 2 Oasis while we wait for that sub to come in. Uh, but again, we're going to be back on Oasis, as I mentioned, with Stonington versus Ludlow. And Ludlow is currently up 1-0 in the series.
Welcome back, guys. We are about to get into map two, Oasis, in this quarterfinal match between Stonington Bears and the Ludlow Falcons. Ludlow took game number one so close in that map, and with their backs against the wall, the Bears have made a change. Lobsterology is coming in Welcome for Lubbock, and this feels maybe like backs are against the wall for Stonington, and they know it. Cool. Yeah, uh... Especially since this was Ludlow's pick, and you know, as we talked about, I'm expecting them to do something, something weird here. I don't know. It's going to be tough for Stonington to pull it out. Yeah, there's also Glacier has been so good on environmental kills and things like that. And if the Lucio can kind of get going and make some things happen here, it could be very strong for Ludlow. And Lobsterology is going to come in. We kind of talked about this. Matthews looks like he's actually switching over to the D.Va, so Lobsterology is going to take the Moira. Uh, I guess that makes sense because Lubbock was playing the D.Va and Lobsterology seemed to be more of a support player, but I don't know. I think <laughs> I think Matthews was doing pretty well on the support, don't you? Yeah, it, it's interesting from Stonington. You know, we're never going to see the... We're not, not necessarily going to know the reason for the switch, but um, I do love this from Stonington if this holds, because that is a Torb. Uh, we, uh, we jinxed it, but they are running McCree with a dive, which is not the easiest thing to do. We'll see how they decide to coordinate it. Meanwhile, on the other side, it's a Genji Farah dive coming out, which I think should be very strong at this point. Yeah, and Fruity Mains with that pharmacy, it's been so good for them. They're going to go right for it, though. And Stevek, right away, finding the kill on a Cranker. They got Bacon Pie on that Farah so low, but the pharmacy keeping him alive. They're focusing so hard on trying to take him down. Lobsterology goes down. And I think this is a common mistake that teams fall into, is they really hard focus that Farah, and it's so hard to take her down when she has that Mercy Pocket. You really just need to ignore her and try and avoid her damage as much as possible and we'll see if stonington can make that switch yeah we'll have to see because like you said cranker kind of had the opposite idea it was oh hey there's a uh farah i'm just gonna jump on top of her oh wait there's a mercy there i do no damage to this farah so and yeah farah again high up in the sky but look rifofo getting dove on in the back line there's a winston and a genji there that you can focus boys lineth pulling out the dragon blade he finds the lucio is going for more there goes moira can he get anything else everyone's so low he manages to get diva d mech non-toxic sticks a bomb onto fruity memes but i think that's a bit of a waste that fight was already lost yeah, just trying to stall for some reason now. Gun just gonna get staggered. Glacier picking up the kill. They actually do de-mech Snarfles. That um, is big. If Snarfles doesn't reset, they're at a huge disadvantage. And if she does, they're still kind of at a disadvantage. Yeah, but they also have about four alts upcoming shortly once Bacon Pie gets that barrage because they in both of their defensive alts, so the Valkyrie and the Sound Barrier and Snarfles. Hasn't reset and still is only 60% towards another mech. And Cranker gonna try and dive up onto the high ground onto Stevek, but his team isn't with him. He took so much damage. There comes a sound barrier from the side of Ludlow, and Stonington really hasn't committed much else, but look at that. Not Toxic and Rifofo both going down. Stonington, no more DPS left. They need to disengage here. Yeah, and they do take out Fruity Memes just kind of as a consolation prize. They're still fighting, which is something we applauded them for kind of on their attack, but it's starting to hurt them here as it's 90%, and they're going to struggle just to get back to point. Yeah, they really need to get cleaner disengages on these lost fights. I think it's something that's kind of surprised me, as on King's Road, it seemed like their communication and their disengages were pretty good. So we're going to see the Dragon Blade coming out again from Lineth, there goes not toxic can he get anyone else i don't think so matthew's gonna take bacon pie out of the sky with his diva bomb and they're just fighting on point brawling it out right now trying to see what they can get and stonington lobsterology on that moira finally going down but there goes fruity memes as well stevic on that winston just being a monster right now finding so much damage and just being so obnoxious right now can he finish off the rest of these kills it 
doesn't look like it's gonna matter because Ludlow is just getting their reinforcements faster. So even the Stevic's just buying time with that Winston, the barrage kicks too, and that's gonna be the first point. That was fairly clean from the Falcons for as close as that first map was. And you know, this is kind of what I expected. Um, not totally. I was expecting them to have something a bit more unorthodox. Maybe we'll see something come out here, but Ludlow had a clear plan for this map. They picked Oasis for a reason, and they came out and they showed why with absolute domination. There's no other word for it uh, on that first section of Oasis. Well, what does Stonington need to change for the second point? Because if you ever want to talk about your backs are against the wall, down one map already, down one point on what could be your final map of the season what do you change I, to keep your season alive i think they should run anti-dive or at least a death ball they need to stick together and they need to focus because lineth and stevic yes their dives are nice but they're not perfect oftentimes one of them gets there first you can take advantage of that you can focus them down and that is a huge advantage to get an early pick like that against dive well, and they do take out Bacon Pie, but Matthews falls as well, so it looks like it's just going to be counter dive again, and oh yeah, you're against a Mercy, so Bacon Pie's back alive. Yeah, Bacon, but Fruity Memes did lose her life trying to res Bacon Pie up, and we also see Schnarfels lose his mech. He's close to getting it back, though, so I don't, I don't think that's going to be a big dish issue. Yeah, and Fruity probably dying there wasn't the worst thing for Falcons, because... You know, the Mercy, once you get the res off, if you don't have Valkyrie, uh, especially if the res is on a key target, then your job in a fight is primarily done. Oh my goodness. And look, this is what I'm talking about. They get split off. Not Toxic gets Dove on, and yeah, Crash is there to heal him, but it's not enough. But they could have easily focused down Glacier or Stevek there. Sorry, Lineth or Stevek there. And maybe been able to turn that fight around if they could stick together. And once again, Fruity Memes gets an arguably key res because they did take down Stevic. And now Stevic's right back in at full health and has that Primal Rage. So this Winston is going to be even more annoying for the next time the Bears come in. And here comes the Diva Bomb. Is it going to find anything? No, but not Toxic. Gets pushed out of position with Cranker. Both of them get taken down. And Schnarfel's on the point trying to deal with Rifofo on this Reaper. In the meantime, all of Rifofo's teammates are falling around and Matthew's getting DMAC, Lobsterology, and Crash getting taken down. And this is just a systematic decimation here. Not Toxic getting a revenge kill onto Bacon by and Fruity Memes before going down. That means no res and Ludlow down too. Here comes a res from Crash and Stonington's gonna try and push off this. They need to. That's five ultimates stored up from the Falcons. If they get another chance to set up, there's not going to be much time left for the Bears, so they have to go now while they have a small Here advantage. Here comes the Dragon Blade in the back line. Lineth takes down the Coalescence, but he gets shattered and charged. What a big takedown there from Cranker. Ludlow with the sound barrier, but that just enables Not Toxic and Ripopo to come in with the fat damage, the Death Blossom, and the Deadeye. So much killing. The kill feed fills with blue as Stonington finds so many kills, but they just need to finish up a few more to get the cap. Yeah, there's just the last few people of the Falcons alive. The Mercy has stayed alive this entire time. Finally, he's going to fall. Is this going to be enough? Bacon Pie trying to keep alive. And yes, they're finally going to flip it back. It took them so long to do it. We'll see how well they're able to hold. They did manage to force out all five of Ludlow's alts in that hold there, or while Ludlow was trying to uh, push them off, but they don't have much to work with themselves. Absolutely not. Just the Earth Shatter building up towards the Diva Bomb, but no support alts, and Earth oh! Shatter already used. A huge Earth Shatter in this room from Cranker, but they again can't find the follow up. Lineth with the Dragon Blade, he finds one. Stevic finishes up another, but Lineth getting taken down by Cranker's Hammer, but there's no healing for the side of Stonington. Ludlow is getting pushed back somehow, but I don't know how Stonington's going to hold on here with no heals. Yeah, they have to hope that Crash and Lobsterology can get here and that they can just hold out with the little health they do have. And it looks like it is just going to barely work. I have to assume that when is dying there, forced the Falcons back, even with the low health that may have been on Stonington. They didn't want to necessarily risk that. 
And again, Ludlow with no ults, they are going to build up the monkey ult, but I don't know how much impact they can get with it. Meanwhile, Coalescence and uh, Death Blossom are up for the side of Stonington. Oh, Crash down. goes down early again. Die. Here Die. comes Rifopa Die. with the Death Blossom. So much damage, he forces the far out way off the point. Fruity Memes can't heal her up either. He is going to get a health pack, but he's not going to be able to get back into this fight. And you've only got about one more fight, I would think. One good fight if you're the Falcons here. You do have three ultimates. That Valkyrie can be huge, as we know. The Earth Shatter and the Diva Bomber are both going to be up for Stonington, though. They have to be so careful about this fight. They also need to engage with their Valkyrie. And oh, Lineth getting so lucky. The Buggy Rhine Charge saves his life. Stevic and Snarples also finding kills with their ults. The Diva Bomb comes up, but Lineth found so much with that dragon blade and if i'm cranker right now i'm gonna be really pissed writing an email to jeff right now because he was right on lineth with that charge yeah they got the earth shatter onto lineth you look that you looked like that that might have been good it might have been the fight that kept this match going but he just stayed alive they couldn't kill the genji and he got two kills of his own and once again it's back and forth it's close but ludlow just find a way to win and here we see this play of the game from ludlow and this is what i'm talking about look at how long it took them to focus down right Ofo in a 3v1 imagine if his team was there backing him up and, and counter diving them yeah it's absolutely lineth had nine dragon blade kills over five dragon blades in that map that is absurd on the Genji. He had such a good series. He's had such a good day, and that's what you expect with Ludlow. Lineth has been that true carry here. And honestly, Stevic really stepped up on that Winston. And yeah, we saw a fantastic match coming out there from Ludlow and Stonington. That means that Ludlow is going to move on to the semifinal later this week. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. They will have their semifinal match on Thursday, I believe, against the Notre Dame Green Knights. So that will be a very interesting match. Um, but yeah, what what are your final thoughts on the Falcons heading in to that semifinal? Well, I think their biggest advantage is their defense. You know, their offenses look a bit shaky, but their defense has shown to be a stone wall against multiple opponents at this point. And even though Stevek struggles in the Rhine v. Rhine, once he switches onto that Orisa and Winston, he really shines. And so he's able to cover that weakness. And I really don't think it's going to affect them too much. I see Ludlow going deep into the playoffs. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to watch. Keep an eye on them as they go 4-0 over the course of today, taking both quarterfinal matches. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to both matches today. The Ludlow Falcons once again move on and will play in the semifinals on Thursday. Our semifinal action actually starts on Tuesday with Rocket League. Wednesday will be League of Legends. And then on Thursday, we will have those Overwatch semifinals. You can make sure to follow us. Follow us at official EGF on Twitch and Twitter so you can get all those updates and announcements. And then this season, again, guys, would not be possible without the support from our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, HyperX, and Controller Chaos. Thank them so much for making this season possible, and be sure to check them out. And for the last time today, we are still doing that MVP vote, so make sure you type exclamation point MVP to get in on the action. I have been Victor Vic Sharp Watney, and you can find me on Twitter at, a, at the Vic Sharp. And I am Cool J, and you can find me on Twitter at Cool J underscore OW. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time.